All right, so we have come to the end of our Mother Sabbath, the eve of a new week, and we want to just continue to encourage the brethren as we move in an untried week, no doubt one that will carry us closer to the day when Jesus will come. But before that, we must endure trials, tribulation, and seven last plagues to be fit for heaven. I want to read from this book from Ellen G. White, The Upward Look. Beautiful devotional. I'm going to read under the topic, The Cities Are to Be Warned. The Cities Are to Be Warned. Revelation 14 verse 8 says, And there followed another angel, saying what? Babylon is? Fallen is? Fallen. That great what? City. Because she made what? All nations drink of the wine of the wrath of our fornication. I read for you. It says, individually and as a people, we have a most solemn work before us. There is a daily preparation of heart and mind to be gained in order that we might be fitted to work out the purposes of God for us. This is individual. The perils of the last days are upon us. And anyone who doesn't see that now is blind. Not just spiritually, but physically. And that this time we are each determining what our destiny. Not for tomorrow or next week, but for eternity shall be. Individually, we are to form characters. And that is what we wanted to leave with this evening. Characters that will stand the test of the judgment. Individually, we are to give in the church where we are an example of faithfulness and consecration. And I want to extend that to, to, to not just in the walls of a building, but at work and everywhere. Our life must reflect who? Jesus. The ministry of the word, King James Version, the Bible, is designed to prepare a people to stand in the times of temptation in which we live. And church members, our brothers and sisters in the present truth, are to cooperate with the work of the ministry by what? Revealing in the life the principles of truth. That no word shall be spoken or act performed that will lead into false path or create a condition of things that God cannot approve. There has been revealed to me, the prophet says, the grave dangers we shall meet in these last days of peril and temptation. Our only reliable light and guide for this time is in the what? The word of God. We must take this word as our what? Counselor and faithfully follow its instruction. Everything. Or we shall find that we are being controlled by our own peculiar traits of character. I want to remind us this evening that our greatest enemy is within us. And our lives will reveal a selfish work if we don't follow the Bible. That will be a hindrance and not a blessing to our fellow men. It is the duty of those who stand as leaders and teachers of the people to instruct church members and brethren how to labor in missionary lines and then how to labor in missionary lines and then to set in operation and then to set in operation and to set in operation it says um, the great grand work of proclaiming widely this message that must arose every unworked city before the crisis shall come. Now the encouragement of this reading is to work the cities, not to live in the cities. Alright, so mark that distinction. And it says, when through the working of satanic agencies, the doors now open to the message of the third angel shall be closed. And I believe the doors have already begun to close and we have a short window. It says, the righteous judgments of God with their weight of final decision are coming upon the land. Do not over over the churches to repeat over and over again the same truths to the people. While the cities are left in ignorance and sin. In other words, go out. It's not time for church program and in a church and 
and, and church pews. Go out. That is what the reading is saying. We must go out to the cities. Warn the people. Soon the way will be edged up. And these cities will be close to the gospel message. I remember there was a time when you could just freely go on the bus and preach. That, that don't exist anymore. That is showing you that the doors are what? They are closing. Soon the way will be edged up and the cities will be close to the gospel message. Wake up the church members. I dare say wake up yourself. Because some brethren don't want to be waking up. That they may unite in doing a definite and self-denying work. The final paragraph said the world is preparing for the closing work of the third angel's message. And we are seeing it in the events everywhere. The world is, is moving. What about you and what about me? The truth is now to go forth with a power that it has not known for years. Because the church has been dead asleep for years. The message of present truth. Of what? When we say present truth, we're not talking about repentance and confession. That's milk. We're talking about present truth. What is that? Character development. Judgment. Most holy place. Mark of the beast. Time of trouble. Sunday law crisis. Get ready now. Leave the city into the country. Work the city. Health reform. Dress reform. Sabbath reform. Music reform. Present truth. That is what the world needs to be proclaimed everywhere. And there followed another angel saying what? Babylon. What is what? Babylon is falling. Again, Babylon is falling, that great city. Because she made all nations drink of the wine. And we know that wine represents doctrine. And everywhere today there is false doctrine. I want to just close with a very particular text that I found interesting. Psalms 94, verse 20. Listen what it says. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee? By asking you and I a question. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee? Listen to this line. Which frame it mischief by a law. Who is going to create mischief by law? Who is going to create mischief in the land by law? Who is this that frame it mischief by law? They gather themselves together against the soul of the who? The righteous and condemn the innocent blood. Who is this? And verse 22 says, but the Lord is my what? My defense. Hmm? The Lord is my defense and my God is the rock of my refuge. And he shall bring upon them their own iniquity and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. Yea, the Lord, our God, shall cut them off. So there's two groups right here in the text. From Psalms 94, verse 20 to 23. Who frame it mischief by law? Who is the one that's now making laws that's going to cause mischief and going to come against the innocent and righteous? But the Bible says the Lord is our what? Defense. And he's going to cut them off. So this evening, our encouragement is to stay on the right side. And to work. For the Bible says the night cometh when who? No man can what? And work no. Because no is the footman days. And if you cannot run no, then when who come? The horse. You're not going to be able to what? Keep up. I'm going to close with the song 596. The song says, Look for the way, Mark. You know that song? Beautiful song, Look for the way, Mark. As your journey on, look for the way, Mark. These are songs we don't sing much anymore now, but these are powerful songs. These are Adventist songs that nobody else can sing. This, this, this is one of them. Nobody else can sing this song. Because we alone understand. Look for the way marks as you journey on. Look for the way marks passing one by one. Down through the ages, past the kingdom's four. Where are we standing? Look the way marks are. Look for the way marks, the great prophetic way marks. Down through the ages, past the kingdom's four. Look for the way marks, the great prophetic way marks. The journey is almost o'er. 
Jesus, the Assyrian kingdom ruled the world. Then me the Persia's banners were unfurled. And after Greece held universal sway, Rome seized the scepter. Where are we today? Look for the way marks, the great prophetic way marks. Down through the ages, past the kingdom's fall. Look for the way marks, the great prophetic way marks. The journey is almost o'er. Down in the feet of iron and of clay, weak and divided, soon to pass away. What will the next great glorious drama be? Yes, church, Christ and his coming and eternity. Look for the way marks, the great prophetic way marks. Down through the ages, past the kingdom's fall. Look for the way marks, the great prophetic way marks. The journey is almost done. That's where we are, brethren. We are down in the feet of iron and of clay. It's weak and divided. This is Daniel chapter 2. Soon to pass away. And what? What is coming next? What will the next great glorious drama be? Christ and his kingdom and eternity. I'd like to even say we are in the toenail. It's almost finished. Jesus is about to come. The hardest part of the race is when you're nearing the finish line. Do not give up, saints of God. Jesus is coming again. Let us pray. Loving Jesus, Holy Father, Eternal King, we thank you for a quiet, a blessed day today as we worship you in spirit and in truth. Your spirit was here amongst us as we listen to truths, for some of us old truths. Father, but may these old truths constantly remind us of where we are, of what's about to come. May as we learn, may we practice. Spirit of God, continue to struggle with us father until we overcome like jacob and we are fitted to get a name change as overcomers father be with us as we face the untried week it's untried but we face it with the same powerful god that has brought us through in the past as we look at the way marks as we journey on we see and we look up and know that redemption draw nigh help us to do the work and finish the work you have given us to do and so we can welcome you when you come. Lo, behold, this is our God. We have waited for him and he shall save us. Bless our family, our friends, even enemies, O oh, Father. O oh, Lord, we pray even for this country as we move forward into this untried week. And Lord, we pray somebody turn before it's too late. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.